All right, it's Danny here with the Crypto Show, and we are in Miami at the Shitcoin Conference because, you know, hey, shit gets real around here. Absolutely. <laughs> and some shit's private. Uh, very private. Very private. So this is Captain Drake with Pirate Chain, and I'll, I'll get into that, I'll, I'll, I don't know how we're going to go about this, but I, w I recently watched a video by somebody who was hating on Pirate Chain mostly because he noticed that Jeff Berwick was promoting it. Mm -hmm. So he had these empty arguments about uh, trusted setup. Yep. Uh, can you explain what trusted setup is and why is he full of shit? Yeah, so essentially to generate the keys for um, ZK Snarks, right, there had to be a ceremony for that where a bunch of people participated. So it's somewhere around like 80 something users participate in and input their keys to the for the key generation. Now, the why the reason why that's bullshit is a uh, bullshit argument is because if 80 something users that would need to collude, all of them would need to collude in order to break the trust set, uh, to break the setup, right? And there's it's been known that at least quite a few of them just trash their keys, destroyed them in one way or another, right? Things like that. So the yeah, the trust, is, the trust is that they destroyed their keys. Yeah. Right. But even if one person was honest, everyone else colluded. If one person was honest, everything's safe. That's the way that the whole thing was made. Right. So the reason why it's BS is because literally one person is obviously going to be trustful, and that's just destroyed. And uh, so Z, uh, well, Zcash has been around for a while. How many times has this happened? Where where the keys were compromised and transactions were reversed or revealed or none. none. So it has not happened yet no, at all. The, they went from Sprout to Sapling, which was, Sapling was the powers of Tau ceremony, right? Mm -hmm. So previously they had the original ceremony for Sprout and there was, I forget how many users, but it was not, not nearly as many as the one for the powers of Tau, right? And then because of that, there could be several users that were um, compromised and then could reveal all the stuff. Didn't happen, but because of that, um, basically they went to sapling, which increased you know, a ton of stuff like speed and transaction size, reduced all that stuff, and made it so that only one user had to be honest out of the 80-something that participated in order for it to hold true. So I wanted to get that out of the way because most of the videos you watch, it's like, it's in the headline, uh, ZK is this, that, that, you know, I, let's just get it out of the way so people don't have to wait to the end to find out that question. Because yeah. I thought that's an important question. Because people that, are actually acting on this moron's, uh, you know, ask, his assessment of it. And frankly, he's just a vegan cook. <laughs> so I don't know what he actually knows about cryptography. Yeah. But, you know. And the other thing, too, is that Halo is coming out in the near future. Mm -hmm. Halo is a trustless, trustless version of ZK Snarks. Oh, wow. So that, yeah, the Halo guy's here. I seen him here earlier, the Halo Chain guy. So <laughs> no, not Halo Chain. Uh, um, Halo is the name of the trustless version of oh, okay. ZK Snarks. Okay, okay. So essentially, there's no, there will be no issues at that point with someone saying a trusted setup because it's right. completely trustless. Yeah. However, there is downsides. Like for example, transaction speed is slower, transaction weight is bigger, things like that. But it all comes with the territory. Right. Okay, so now let's go ahead and jump into what Pirate Chain is. So this is Captain Drake with Pirate Chain. Tell me about Pirate Chain and how it came about. So Pirate Chain was actually developed by the Komodo developers itself. Because we're born out of that ecosystem. We're a completely independent blockchain, but all we do now is utilize our delayed proof of work service, which notarizes our stuff onto their chain, which right. now, on the, as of the 14th, will get notarized onto Litecoin. So in order to 51% attack us, you have to 51% attack us, Komodo, and Litecoin simultaneously to do anything. Right. Now, as far as Pirate Chain goes, we are a full ZK Snark chain to where all P2P transactions are shielded. Unlike Zcash, where they have 95% of the transactions transparent. What this means is that we're completely fungible, and anything that is sent between users, nobody knows what the hell it is. They just know a transaction happened. They don't see amounts, addresses, nothing. Right. I challenge people saying, I have five R in my wallet. Prove that I'm wrong. And nobody can. Right. And 
So you're, you're using Komodo. So Komodo is the platform, and the chains that are on this are, are asset chains that are on Komodo. And so you're an asset chain that is on Komodo, but all of the chains are independent of each other. So even if one chain does go down, it doesn't actually affect other chains. So it's not like an ERC-20. You're not a token. Correct. You're a coin because you are, you are, are an independent chain uh, from every other chain is on Komodo. So if something happens to one of them, it does not affect you. If Komodo were to disappear tomorrow, we'd still be here. We just lose delayed proof of work. Because that's all what we're using them for. You're only using the delayed part? Or what about the the uh, the ASICs mining? Are you getting any anything from the ASICs mining at all? Nope. Okay, so you what you did is when you went in to set up the modules, you just took the, the delayed proof of work and you didn't uh, include the the... Uh, proof of work or proof of stake or any of the other custom. stuff. Yeah, everything custom. is custom. So if you don't know what Komodo is, Komodo is this platform that allows you to do all these different things to design your own blockchain and you can have proof of work, proof of stake or uh, delayed proof of work and you customize this and actually I only know this because I'm doing the same thing with Monero. I'm Monero will be on, on Komodo. I'm actually talking with them tomorrow about it. Nice. Uh, it started out as a joke and I'm like People loved it, so I'm like, fuck, why not? Yeah. And it's supposed to be a private shit coin. And I'm on this other shitty chain called Aspire, so it's completely centralized, and I wanted to actually have privacy. So I decided to go with Moto. I interviewed Jason Brown years ago, mm -hmm. and, and I'd already known you know, quite a bit about it, but I really wasn't you know, versed on uh, how flexible the, the platform was and, and how to uh, just completely customize what you want. So, yeah. what what are some of the aspects that, that you've seen in Komodo that you wanted to just implement into uh, into Pirate Chain? Well, one of the biggest things was the uh, atomic swaps that are coming out in the near future. Right. right. So originally, and it's funny because a lot of times what we hear is, oh, well, you can't do that with a zk snark chain. Nobody's going to list you on an exchange. Nobody's going to do this. We prove them wrong every time. And especially with uh, uh, atomic swaps, because beforehand, I would say several months ago, it wasn't even thought of as being possible to do a full ZK snark coin being atomically swapped with something else. But now here we are, mm -hmm. figured it out, and now we're able to list on the atomic decks and be atomically swapped with any other coin that's on there. Right. So it's just a matter of time when that comes out and it's fully functional to where people can atomically swap higher chain with anything else, even Monero. Yeah. Uh, the the guys with the Lightning Network actually Andrew Polstra is designing something within Lightning so that you, you can do atomic swaps cross chain swaps within the Lightning Network so that'll be interesting oh yeah and I think uh, uh, the talk that I went to and listened to and talked about stated all of the points you know so uh, we'll see how that turns out but yeah. that should be that should be pretty interesting more because I think the more uh, the more decentralized platforms we have like that or DEXs that yeah. could actually interact with each other could create a lot more obfuscation. Oh, yeah. Like just just the ability to cross-chain swap through multiple coins is gonna obfuscate the coin. Oh yeah, and the thing is too is that you'll see a lot of users migrate to DEXs and atomic DEX uh, technology yeah. and away from centralized exchanges. Yeah. And then you'll see all the institutional investors migrate to centralized exchanges so there'll right. be that division at that point. yeah just the protection of your own personal data where you don't have the kyc is left out of the equation yeah uh is is a major protection on your part yeah exactly by using the using the decks um so what are you progressing are you adding anything else or are there new features coming into pirate chain where do you see it going well one of the new features that we have is we're actually improving um, the efficiency of ZK Snarks on any chain, mm -hmm. which is something that Zcash is probably going to take from us. So they're going to implement some of our stuff into their stuff, more than likely, because what's happening is with, uh, say for example, you're an exchange and you have thousands upon thousands of addresses. Prior to uh, the past couple of weeks, it would take you days, if not weeks, to rescan and rebuild your entire wallet because it has to go through every single transaction for each individual address multiple times for every single address that you have. Whereas with the way it's built now, thanks to Forge and the whole entire team that was working on it, essentially it rescans the chain once, finds every single transaction for every single address associated with that wallet. So now it speeds it up from weeks to about two hours. 
no matter how many addresses you have. So. Awesome. Um, where can people find out about Pirate Coin? What uh, you know? What dexes are you on, or what exchanges are you on? Yeah. So people can find us at pirate.black. Uh, we're on Changely, Changely Pro, Digifinex now. We're on Bitcoin.com, CoinX, Tradeover, Polarity.exchange, and then uh, a handful of other exchanges. Oh wow! wow. Yeah. So what's the process of, of? Is that a hard process going through and getting the exchanges? Are they requiring payment to? to be included? Some or? do, some don't. It all depends on how they feel toward privacy coins in general. Um, on top of that, since we're growing pretty big now, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to get on different exchanges because some just basically didn't want to list us at first and then now they're like, yeah, we want to add you. you know? okay. um, on top of that, as far as uh, KYCing, I mean, I have to KYC okay. myself and things yeah. like that. So it's a sacrifice that we take to make sure that we get progress forward into where we want to be. Right. And okay, one of the other topics that they bring up is pre-mining and all that. So what's the, um, what was the emission rate and how is it, uh, what, what percent has been mined so far? And, uh, so far, I believe it's about 90%. 90%. 80-something, 90%. And that's what, when in three years or? Yeah, about three years, okay. yeah. So essentially, um, 200 million coins, uh, that are that's the max supply total been, that's been mined is about 180 I want to say uh -huh. but yeah some people say oh that's a fast emission rate but we didn't have a pre-mine and anybody that says we do is doesn't realize well if you say we were then yeah. Bitcoin was and everything yeah. else was because you have to promote your product right and if nobody takes notice right away how can you help them yeah right but either way I mean taking for example we and I want to preface this with I love Monero our whole team loves Monero. Yeah. We believe that there should be multiple privacy coins out there. However, Monero next year will hit their max supply. And now they have tail emissions, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, so, I mean, to say that, well, our emission rates are too fast. Well, so is theirs. Mm -hmm. You know, because, I mean, Bitcoin lasts a long, 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 long time. Whereas Monero hits their max supply next year. Right. You know? So how, what was that? How many coins came out and, and what was the... Uh what was the distribution? Was it mined or yeah, I mean, straight mining? It was all. So it was just the the miners that took that uh, took the initial rewards, and it was it was yeah. just mined at that rate. Yep. So uh, there's an initial block reward of 256 that went down to 128. First having every time every nine months we have. Oh, okay. So it has the uh, mining right. reward. Every and time. so when you're building this on Komodo, do you get to decide what the coin emission is when you're setting up uh, what your consensus is going to be and how everything else is? You, well, if you would have built it through, I uh, 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 forget the uh, name of it, but through their uh, Antara. Oh, yeah. If you would yeah. have built it through that, yeah, you can do all that stuff. Yeah. But like I said, this was like a whole separate thing. That This is something that you actually, you can't rebuild Pirate Chain on Antara. There's oh, okay. a ton of custom stuff that went into this, and there's nothing that can be duplicated completely on Antara. Oh, Antara, yeah. Which was a really cool plug and play at, oh, yeah. at one point, uh, but I guess they took that down. I don't know why, but yeah. it was just this thing where like five minutes and you could just do everything you want. Yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, and now I, I don't know why they took it down. Do you? I'm not sure to be honest. Yeah, I was I was hoping to actually use that, and I was like, wow, this is cool. I want to use this. But, oh yeah. Uh, now I'm gonna have to go jump through a few hoops because I'm not very technical at all, but I do. I, I have an idea how I want want this to work and uh, you know how the emission rate should go and, and uh, paying people for memes I mean it's a yeah. it's actually poking fun at Monero the the name Monero yeah. uh, Monero, Monero Maximus but uh, yeah because they're yeah Monero okay whatever yeah. <laughs> you know so it was actually a joke that way and people loved it even Monero holders were like yeah I dig this yeah. And uh, that, so they were some of the first ones that started memeing was it some Monero holders from Acapulco. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is, you can't be a maximalist with anything. Otherwise, you'll find yourself in trouble. You right. Because, I mean, if, for example, if you're a maximalist in Pirate Chain, Monero, and everyone migrates toward one, yep. then if somehow the privacy gets broken on it, everyone's screwed. There needs to be multiple options with privacy. That's why we love, like we say, we love Monero because of the work that they've done and there's solid privacy, just like certain other privacy coins out there. However, there shouldn't be just one that rules all, you know? Cool. All right, check out pirate, pirate.black. <laughs> I think we drifted out of the frame a little yeah. bit, but whatever. All good. <laughs>